Richard, how are you? How have you coped with everything in this pandemic? Personally, I think I'm dealing okay. Um, I'm lucky that I'm in Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam, in general, has done a pretty good job about handling this coronavirus situation. Um, uh, my baby was just born literally two and a half months. So that's really balancing the family, the new family life with um, trying to figure out what we're going to do for this year. Uh, yeah. As a visual artist, do you think like uh, right now the pandemic have affecting a lot uh, in terms of your practice or? Yeah, it's affected my practice a lot. Um, just before the pandemic uh, became a global situation, I had an exhibition in Hong Kong in January, mid-January. And um, news was just coming out then that there was a concern in China just before Chinese New Year. And people were worried about, you know, the mass migration throughout the country and how that was going to affect this virus. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the situation I, under which I had my exhibition in Hong Kong. And then I came back to Vietnam. And then it be, shortly became very clear that this was going to be a much bigger ordeal. Mm -hmm. Uh, so my exhibition went from January until March, and I think I, I, I basically had no visitors because the city shut down, galleries were shutting down. Even during that time, Art Basel finally um, canceled its Hong Kong exhibition. Yeah, uh, it's basically formally. everything was down uh, since uh, March, isn't it? Yeah, so that, that didn't happen. Um, so basically, a lot of the attention that I was hoping I might have received for the exhibition uh, just didn't materialize. But it has affected me sort of emotionally that I'm very concerned for how the prospects for the near term are going to be. Mm -hmm. I had an exhibition also scheduled for March mm -hmm. in Bangkok, and that was, that was canceled, obviously, and then postponed to April. Um, and then it was finally canceled. So, and even in our discussions, a lot of the plans that we had for 2020 have changed as well. So mm -hmm. I think we're all adapting mm -hmm. um, day by day, in fact, on who, what's gonna be open, um, shifting deadlines, shift, and, and for me, um, basically not having income from artwork, which is my sole sort of Yes, I know. Yeah, it's, it's so, really yeah. I need to, like all artists, I need to ride this out. Um, but having time in the studio is fine. Mm -hmm. I, I have a, I've made a list of things that I'd like to do, regardless, before the pandemic came out, of things that I wanted to accomplish in 2020 from the studio mm -hmm. side of things. Of which areas I wanted to improve, new skills or materials I wanted to learn. I still intend to do those, but now um, I've got to balance that with, you know, the addition to the family and living. Um, we're going to survive, but um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just a little anxious, actually. It, it's more anxiety, and anxiety is, is the fear of the unknown, yes. right? I think um, not necessarily with the now, situation happy. right yeah. now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you see uh, those times changing? You know, like how it will be if affect uh, the art and the cultures are being valued. Well, I mean, we've seen a lot of um, things on the media and network television. A lot of a lot of people are trying to make an effort to do things. Um, given the situation, you had Saturday Night Live, for example, doing their program from home. Lady Gaga had that music show that was broadcast from musicians around the world, recording and broadcasting from their homes. So a lot of people are trying new things. Um, my hope is that it's just not a stopgap measure where they're improvising now, but things completely return to the way they were before. I don't think things can actually really return to the way they were before this pandemic. So many things have changed. Yes. Um, how it affects the artists um, is probably going to be like how it affects small businesses because a lot of artists are independent. A lot of, a lot of um, people are going to be under hard times. Yes. Um, 
and especially if their their clientele this, this applies to galleries galleries are small businesses mm -hmm. largely i think of course the large mega galleries are going to be insulated from this anyways and a lot of the really you know blue chip artists mm -hmm. are going to be insulated from from any of this mm -hmm. but for a lot of the small and medium sized galleries and emerging in mid-career artists, mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be a trying time for them. Well, I see like the artist is the one that would suffer a lot. And then of course, uh, next would be, you know, like uh, small galleries. And uh, do you see like uh, anything that you, you, you think that it would be helpful to, to, to suggest? I mean, what, what we, we do what we can do. I mean, mm -hmm. I think just having conversations, number one, um, particularly with me and you um, having a conversation about how we're going to adapt to this. But in general, artists need to keep up their, uh, their relations with their network in any way they can. Um, because the arts community tends to be pretty supportive with each other. Yeah. We've always generally been like that. This is apart from the commercial aspect of the art world, yeah. right? But as far as the, um, the, the, the social network of art, mm -hmm. we, we generally have tend to be pretty supportive. Um, and I think um, given that we can't really go out and meet people, we have to be able to communicate with them in other ways. And, and what we're doing here perhaps is, is one way of doing that. Um, rather than just having like an, uh, a press release sort of video, we, we're just talking um, and trying to think through the problems that we're facing in the short term. How do you see all these things that you've been putting uh, online, trying to make everything online, and how do you see that? Do you think uh, that would be, you know, a good idea? Well, right now we don't have really a choice. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing we can do. But I've always thought it was a bit of a utopia. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, we've discussed this as well. Um, that you can't simply transfer a brick and mortar gallery to an online gallery right away and, yeah. and expect to see like, you know, a miracle. Yeah, you in know, my opinion as a gallery, the collector's behavior is not like, you know, like we are putting online or not actually. Right. It's, but what is at the end the powerful is the uh, buying behavior of the all the collectors in art. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 I agree. I agree. Examples that like uh, the hashtag uh, in the Instagram that is uh, artist support. So the artists will sell uh, over one thousand US dollar. They have to use that two hundred out of the one thousand to buy some artists' work. People need to come up with. With, with, with new innovations like that, for sure. I think it's a good idea. I don't think it solves long-term problems, but it could, it could make a difference whether an artist is homeless or not. You know, if they don't have a flexible landlord, for example, or they have family to take care of, they, that could be a big difference. Um, this, of having a thousand dollars or two hundred dollars. Let's say something like that. It work in these kind of models. Did you think like uh, will it be work, or you think like humankind is some sort of like still need to be having interactions, physical interaction? Well, I, well, we're social animals. Yeah. Humans have evolved at just like <laughs> chimpanzees and other apes. Yeah. You know, we're, we're 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 socially based, so we cannot do without social contact. That's why in prisons, social isolation is, is the, la the, the, most the, the, the worst punishment you can give someone is solitary confinement. Mm -hmm. But um, I think um, we're gonna have to adapt to this mm. um, because they, they say that perhaps there's gonna be another wave of infections, particularly if people, if, if, if certain governments um, don't implement their proper protocols, that there's gonna be a second wave. Mm -hmm. um, so we ha we're not going to be done with this. And there'll be other things in the future. So, um, but the one thing that artists have always been noted um, for is responding to situations in their own way, creatively. And so um, artists will continue to do that. Um, I think on the collector side, 
um, they need to see, at least from an artist speaking about what they think a collector might think, okay. they need to see what social value artists bring um, to understanding humanity as we're going through this. Um, uh, without a doubt, the heroes of the moment are the frontline workers that are putting their lives at risk mm -hmm. and often receiving no compensation mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. um, artists have been very keen to call out the very affluent, affluent parts of society mm -hmm. where these billion dollar aid packages are quickly being eat up by publicly traded companies when they should go to small businesses, mm -hmm. at least in the US. Things like that. Artists are very good at calling out and making visible a lot of this text. Um, so um, artists need to be at the forefront in one, calling out injustice, and two, in supporting those that are responsible for holding society together. Um, so artists play a very keen role as they always have and artists are very often undervalued as well mm -hmm. uh, but that's just the way it is so do you have any other insights that can uh, keep proactive and positive in terms of like the time of this uncertainty well artists should continue learning i mean from, from my perspective okay having this downtime mm -hmm. there's no excuse for an artist not to continue learning something Okay. Whether it's reading something new, going on YouTube, learning a new skill. For example, um, maybe so a painter wants to do an installation, but can never find the right person to do the video. So why don't you go and learn how to edit simple video yourself? <laughs> yeah. Or why don't you learn, you know, something new? Yes, yes. Um, and that doesn't cost any money either. There's a lot of free resources mm -hmm. with my son. Um, I can hear he, him. He's saying he I agrees. Can... He yeah. agrees with what I've just said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So has the gallery and artist relationship have changed in any ways as a result of this pandemic? For me, no. But um, I mean, our situation has changed mm. our, um, of, of the, the environment we're working in. Mm. But for me, I only have two galleries. I have the SART in Hong Kong and Vin Gallery U. And um, I'm very lucky that both of you know each other well and um, are, you know, seeing eye to eye and, and talk to each other. You, you may talk to Pascal more than I do. So I think, I think I'm very lucky that I have two galleries that I value and more, and more than that, that I trust and that I can work with. Yeah. So uh, thank God I'm lucky about that. Um, has our relationship changed? I think it's improving, in fact, um, because we're, we're talking about what is to be done. Um, we don't have answers necessarily, but we have, um, we have, we're supporting each other in the best way we can. Um, yeah. Yeah, lastly, I would like to ask you, do you have any message you want to send out to our art community as an artist? Well, first, I, first, please be safe. Please, you know, take the warnings about public health very seriously for you and for others. Um, and beyond that, um, if you valued art before as a collector, um, please value art now because it's more important than ever that people are able to share information in unique ways and that artists very often are at the very bottom of the economic ladder though we contribute a lot more weight than in money um so we'd appreciate you thinking of us and um we'll continue making work and responding and uh providing for our families and, and the same as, as everybody. Um, so please be safe and please do not lose your passion for art. 
Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much for your time.